Hello, and welcome to part 2 of 2C3C Spy Guide. Today we'll talk about how exactly you'll get behind the enemy team and what to do once you're there. We'll be covering stealthy movement and how it's different from efficient movement and how to successfully blend into the enemy team. In part 1, we covered efficient movement and how to cover more distance in less time. However, as YouTube user Karnock pointed out, this isn't always necessarily the best choice. Sometimes we'll have to use stealthy movement, which is essentially staying off of the main path. Keep in mind that stealthy movement isn't the opposite of efficient movement, but oftentimes it will seem like it. A good spy will use stealthy movement to get behind an enemy team, and then use efficient movement to kill, escape, and juke. As a rule of thumb, when offensively cloaked or disguised, you'll be using stealthy movement. But what does that mean, exactly? Well, when you're infiltrating the enemy team via cloak or moving amongst them via disguise, your top priority is to avoid being bumped into, as this is an immediate giveaway. When you're cloaked, you will shimmer briefly, thus revealing your location and your presence. If you are disguised, the enemy will not be able to walk through you, thus indicating that you are not on their team. Either way, the enemy will be alerted of your presence and will call you a noobsicle. So, how exactly do you move stealthily? In its simplest form, it's simply getting behind the enemy team undetected. In order to do this, you'll want to use your cloak in the following techniques. Stay on the side of paths rather than in the center. Don't bump into anybody. Hug the wall, walk on rails, or take an alternative route. Don't bump into anybody. Avoid bullets and explosions and areas they're likely to occur in. Don't effin' bump into anybody. Ugh. Here's the graph I made from part 1, slightly modified. The red line is, once again, the typical class movement, and the blue line is efficient movement. This newly added purple line is stealthy movement. The chance of being discovered is reduced drastically, but travel time is slightly increased. Now, this may seem counterintuitive to efficient movement, but it's the spy's job to get behind the enemy, and this isn't going to happen if you bump into them repeatedly, no matter how fast you're moving. Now, this isn't to say that moving efficiently while cloaked is always a bad idea, and it's actually a good idea a lot of the time, especially in the interest of preserving your cloak, but taking the tight corner that you don't know what's around there and risking bumping into someone is not worth shaving that half a second of your travel time. However, if you know what's around the corner, cut it like you're an emo kid with a razor. Stealthy movement is highly advisable when vision is lacking, but if you have a clear vision or you have knowledge of where your enemy is, then take the quickest route possible without bumping into anybody. But remember, if in doubt, chicken out and take that corner loosely. Once you do get behind the enemy team, the game changes drastically for you. You're still trying not to bump into anybody, but at the same time you have to act natural so that your disguise is believable. This means several things. You do not look at your enemy's backs, you do not look at your enemy's eyes, and you do not look anywhere near your enemy. Instead, you should look at your team. You should have the appropriate disguise, the appropriate weapon, and you should be fake reloading. The thing is, is that if you look at your enemies, any competent player will realize that you're trying to pick a target and that you're a spy. By focusing on your team as though they were your enemy, it'll alter your behavior in such a way that it'll increase the believability of your disguise and you'll be far better off. Also, an appropriate disguise is necessary, and I recommend four for the beginning spy, and those are Pyro, Engineer, Sniper, and Spy. These disguises are your best disguises for a couple of reasons. They all move at 100% speed. They all have excuses for not attacking or spamming while grouped up with their team. And it's not unusual for any of them to be grouped up with their team for brief periods of time. As for the other disguises, Medic and Scout will be a giveaway for movement speed alone, and Soldier, Demo Man, and Heavy are expected to spam weapons. Uh, not to mention, they have crappy movement speed. As for the appropriate weapon, the spy can change what weapon the class he is disguised as appears to be holding by pressing the last disguise keybind with the corresponding weapon out. For example, when disguised as the engineer, using last disguise with the revolver out will make it appear as though the engineer switched to a shotgun. With a sapper out, it would be his pistol, and a knife would be as a wrench. So if you opt to disguise as the engineer, make sure you aren't wielding a pistol while standing near a sentry. It's possible for spies to make it appear as though the class they have disguised as reloaded the weapon they are currently holding. This is called a fake reload and is performed by simply reloading your revolver while disguised. This tactic is slightly situational as it can only happen if you actually reload with a revolver. 
which means you can only fake re reload once per disguise and you must have less than six bullets in your clip when you first disguise. Also, this may not fool everybody, but it may be that extra touch to your disguise that convinces that one play player who suspects you. Even with all of this, a good disguise will only last a few seconds. Typically, the factor that gives you away is the fact that you are not shooting, but sometimes the person you are disguised as will see you, or a pyro will do a random spy check, or something of that nature. Therefore, it's better to try to not get seen at all, and rely on your disguise only as a safety net. To do this, we'll have to abuse the field of view of your enemy. Take this picture of Pac-Man, for example. If we imagine that the player is placed right in the middle facing to the right, the yellow area represents the area in which you can stand without being seen. If you stay in this area, they aren't even aware that you're there, and it doesn't matter if you're cloaked or not. As a rule of thumb, if you can see a side profile of their character, they cannot see you. So, it stands to reason that you will be more successful if you stay behind the enemy team as much as possible. And that's about it for this part of 2C3C Spy Guide. Uh, expect part 3 to cover more extensive cloaking and disguising, and a few of the quirky mechanics inherent to them. Once again, leave a comment telling me what you'd like to see, or a question regarding something in the video. I'll answer them as quickly as I can, and I may even make a video answering it if it's needed. Thanks for watching. See you later.